this is this is this is How is so Depeche Mode? I I just Depeche Mode is like a childhood band for me. Like right before I got into punk rock, I was into Depeche Mode. I was into uh, what's the other band? Um, Joy Division. Yeah. Joy Division. Joy Division. Of course. <clears throat> All because of my my cousin and my sister. You know that's that's where I found that stuff. It wasn't me. But back in those days, it was it was usually like a an older person, right? <laughs> you get your your first musical things. Like my mom straight up gave me a Violent Femmes tape. Yeah, that's awesome. And was like, "This is kind of punk. I don't know. Hey, check it out." <laughs> and I don't ha- I don't know how she knew about it or anything. But if she really listened to those lyrics, would she still give me the tape? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Because, I mean, Kiss Off, um, day after day, Yep. I get angry, and I will say yes. that today is in my sight when I take a bow and say goodnight. <laughs> yeah, that's some good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I just saw Depeche Mode last night. Yeah, what was your favorite part of seeing them? You've seen them before? I have seen them once before, yes. How long ago? Oh, uh, geez, 25 years ago or something. Long time ago. Portland? Yeah. Oh, it was longer than that. Actually, that was my first concert. That was with my mom, so that's... Wow. First concert. Yeah, that was my first concert. Depeche Mode. Yeah, my mom brought me. We went and saw Depeche Mode and Nitzer Ebb. A lot of people say depressed mode. Yeah. <laughs> just, That's funny. So, is okay, that is your first con. That's why you're so goth, right? I must be. I mean, I, you know, I've always been way into the Cure and Joy Division. At the same time, I'm into Minor Threat and yeah. <laughs> Black Flag. I, I always wonder why, even though I'm, like, so into punk rock and was definitely influenced by, like, Circle Jerks and even rancid um like how poppy the songs that i write are very it's very poppy because i've also grew up listening to like the beatles and you know just song you know songwriting yeah totally but i don't know yeah i definitely uh yeah that's probably why uh there's a jeff suffering jeff suffering (laughs) yes yeah, De- De- Depeche Mode. I mean, so... <clears throat> Depeche Mode, The Cure, The Smiths, Joy Division. Yeah. <laughs> Susie and the Banshees. We were, just, we were just talking about it before we started this. We were just talking about how so many bands that mainly did theaters, right, when we were when we were kind of coming up and watching bands play. Like, The Smiths, I, I never saw them live, but they if they came back now, it would just be huge. It would be insane. That's what I think. Because I mean, Depeche Mode was always big, right? Like they never really, they never really got small. They just didn't play. Yeah, it seems like you just don't play. Yeah, choose your timing right. That's kind of what Ninety Pound Wuss did. <laughs> you guys, it you're huge now. <laughs> huge now. Yeah. We're so big. <laughs> I mean, I wonder what the difference. I mean, of course, we we can't know, and there's no real. No real value in it, but like what the difference would be if you just had slogged through all these years and kept going, would you be headlining in arenas? You know? Yeah, that's you climate pledge arena headlining. <laughs> no, not us, no. <laughs> no <laughs> come on. Us, but, but, come on, maybe. But yeah, different different uh probably definitely raft of dead monkeys <laughs> <laughs> that'd be funny yeah. I, you can only dream that would be fun yeah botch is doing really well like lately yeah. they kind of like came back and and same thing you know they're doing these big reunion i don't know if they're reunion shows anymore because they've been they've been around a little you know a well, year or two uh it's a, been about a year and i think that I'd as far me. as i know they're done are they they're almost done with I it i think so that's, and they're not going to play anymore. Yeah, that's what I I've heard. Yes, that's what that's. I mean, that brings crowds. Anytime 
anytime somebody thinks you're not going to be around anymore, uh, that's an extra, I don't know how many it percent. Is. It's a percentage, though. <laughs> it's percentage points. That does have percentage points, yes. Mm, mm. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's why it's so hard to just be, just to, because you, you have to have something. And it's just, it's easy if it's like your last tour or whatever, that's an easy, easy whatever it is. And of course, bands should, should I guess, take advantage of it or whatever if you're going to break up, do, do a last tour. But um, with bands like MXPX, like, we just have to, like, keep coming up with some new stuff so like one year it's the box set you know another year it's you know our our you know an album coming out or whatever it is right like it's just you have to like come up with things to talk about always not always because it is good to go away yeah but you can only use some of those tricks so many times and then they they get dumbed down they get blunted and we feel like a lot of those things will save for when we're just like okay we're we're close to the end or something but but for now we're just constantly trying to like refresh like hit that refresh button and and there's a lot of things to refresh in the world but you know you do what you can so do you have sort of like a cycle sort of that you guys kind of have planned out for from like you know writing recording releasing the tour schedule for a certain time and then like a the neck onto the next sort of cycle do you have something like that S sort of yeah uh it, it's kind of um it's kind of a loose plan but then it always changes because you yeah. know the world changes you wake up one day and something happens but but aside that it, it really is a loose plan that we're trying to go towards like there's definitely things that we plan for this new album find a way home to promote it that we haven't even done yet or we didn't quite get to in the way that we wanted to but <clears throat> there's other things that we didn't plan that we did you know so yeah that makes um sense. so yeah things you know and, and then as we get into doing more live shows that takes up a lot of time um a lot of our practice time here is spent working on sets changing up uh changing up uh you know the the transitions and and tightening up what we're doing the breakdowns that takes a lot of time so yeah so like in, in a lot of ways it's some could argue that doing live shows does help people know about your 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 album but not doing live shows could help even more because you're spending more time here thinking about promotion thinking about how to tell people thinking you know doing more podcasts doing more mm -hmm. Uh, live, you know, conversations with people, um, all of that gets all the people that may not see, you know, there's say like at, at an MXPX show, you know, the show box only holds what 1200 people or something like that. Like it's, it's not, it's not giant. Yeah. It's in Seattle, Washington. And, you know, we sell that out every year, but like, and, and that's, we were talking about this. That's like about the smallest place that we've played, you know, in the last few years. Um, average, it's, I would say, 1,800 to 2,200. That's like the average type venue we play. And we don't really like the choices in Seattle, so we like the show box. We like the way it feels. We like the way it sounds. We like the staff, everything. We like the location. But if it was a little bigger, it might be nice. But yeah, would that right. ruin the charm of it? It might. It might it a little might, bit. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, December 30th, I hope to see you there. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> it's you got to come out, fun. come out and sing with us. Yep, I'm planning on it. All right, good, I'm good. Planning on it. I will do that. Thank you. Awesome. That sounds so rad. Yeah, it's gonna be good. We'll do it again. Yeah. Woo! Furnace Fest was so fun. Like that really was a great kickoff to the new album. That was our first. I think it was our first show that we did from you know when the new album came out oh, so yeah cool. so that was kind of special to me uh special to us to to do that and then have you be part of that and yeah it was cool yeah it was a lot of fun thanks for yeah. having me we'll make new memories though Woo! december yeah. 30th we're kicking it off it's the it's saturday night but it's really it's the last weekend of 2023 it's the yeah. last time you get a party on a saturday night and um diesel boys 
going to be there. It's already sold out. I'm not really trying to sell the the show, but I'm just excited um, excited to be playing Seattle. Yeah, yeah. And finally, you're back in the fold, <laughs> I know. so you can't oh. miss the show now. We'll just have to plan around it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. Um, we'll, you know, and and I'm sure we'll get. We'll get MXPX and 90 Pound Wuss together again. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make that happen. Perfect. Yep. We will. We will. We'll, we'll talk about, you know, what you guys might want to do. Okay. For sure. Let's do it. Yeah. That sounds fun. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. So relaxed. Relaxed. Like very relaxed. <laughs> Jeff came in. <laughs> We're just doing a little guest vocal for a, a, a Jeff collab. Um, nothing to do with me, but, uh, happy to help out, happy to be part of it as far as like, you know, put in my two cents, but, uh, you make a good vocal coach. It was fun. I mean, you didn't need much coaching, you Thanks. didn't need much, you know, but you know, you want to get, you want to get, you don't want to just leave it, you know, you want it to be the, at least, you know, something you want to hear. Yeah, no, um, sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for helping. Yeah, everybody needs that, not just Hanging. yeah. Everybody needs that. Yeah, that's um, good. Not just the amateurs. Like that's literally how professionals sound so good is that because <laughs> they don't just do it once; they do it a couple times and they they pick the best one. But um, cool ideas and and your voice sounds good. Wow, it's, thanks. It's cool. Thanks. Yeah, it was fun. I recorded it completely raw, like just um, <laughs> just really the API. I use my API preamp which I've used on so many records, so many records. This is like the first preamp I ever bought. Uh, you know, when we put the studio into, it was called the, well, what was it called back then? The clubhouse back at my parents' house. Okay. I got this API set up, this, this lunchbox, we call it. It's two API preamps with two um, 512C um, equalizers. They're, they're, I, I use them for a few things, but mainly those preamps is what I use. And that's what I used on you, just straight in, no compression, nothing. Just made sure it didn't completely like blow up the yeah. the, the recording. <laughs> but but I feel like that way, he, you know, the, the engineer, the mixer can just take your thing, compress it, make it happen. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Cool. So um, this place is under construction uh, always, right? <laughs> but... But we're really, we're putting in that new console, new old mixing console. And um, right now, I, we, we could probably figure out how to record a bunch of bands, but like it's just a disaster right now uh, as far as like recording a lot of things all at once. So um, it's good that you're only doing vocals. It was easy, <laughs> you know, just the straight chain, super easy. Um, <clears throat> Elvis Costello is famous for, I don't know if he's famous for this, but <laughs> I definitely heard the story. Like he was recording, uh, with no doubt, he was recording something with no doubt and they recorded and he didn't do anything to anything. Like he didn't put like EQ or vocal. Like he was like, how it's recorded is how it sounds. And that's it. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, all right, all right. Uh, okay. That's like a, a completely opposite way of working the way most people do it these days. Cause yes. everything's so, mixed and processed and 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 re reamped but you know there's just so many ways to do things you know i i always prescribe to just trying something new yeah is, is cool a, that's yeah that's a good thing yeah so yeah. i usually since i usually put compression on it i was like i'm gonna not compress not compress it i'm just gonna go straight it it sounds pretty good i think it sounds great yeah yeah, yeah. and also as a as a you know, as a recording engineer, um, I like to hear things uncompressed and un auto tune. A lot of people like to listen to auto tune as they're hearing it back, but I like to listen to things raw, completely raw. Because if it sounds good like that, you know it's going to sound good once you process it. Yeah, it's, it's going to sound even better. So um, that's my vibe. I mean, not everybody's the same. Like I said, there's there's so many ways to do it, and I'm definitely not the best engineer at all but <laughs> yeah i just get it done you know i just you know, i know enough to get it done and like i was like trying to remember a, a shortcut on the keyboard earlier because i'm so used to using final cut pro now for video editing yeah that i haven't been using the the 
short keys on Pro Tools. And so I was just like, wait, what is to mute a track or whatever? You know, like I just wanted to like disable the one track. And on Final Cut Pro, it's V. I think it's V. No, it's, it's V. <laughs> I think whatever I see, I can't yeah. even remember now, but it's whatever I press, it works. It's like <laughs> muscle memory. It's funny, but let's talk about, uh, I mean, we could talk about more Depeche Mode, but I want to talk about <laughs> Dry Bones because oh, yeah. we didn't get a chance last time you were on. We were mostly talking about 90 Pound Wuss, The Mighty Return, <laughs> which we'll definitely talk more about. But um, Dry Bones, that, that's more, would you say what, industrial? Yeah, I think it's like a sort of a punk noise band that's like a industrial influence and stuff right it's the influence right? yeah yeah right. so i mean it's like yeah it's still pretty it feels like making punk rock to me so yeah of it's, course of course but, um the uh yeah it's pretty noisy and experimental and uh really sample driven what's the setup like do you guys play live we haven't yet no We've actually could you never been in a room together <laughs> and made music together in a room together it's all uh joe uh, is in Portland and he sends me files and then I find a way to get stuff on them. Is it and Joe Bones? No, <laughs> it's Joe Mendonca. <laughs> Joe Mendonca, yes, Joe yes. Mendonca. Yes, that's not. You know, I always say this, but that name does sound very familiar, Joe Mendonca. Yeah, he's been around. Yeah, uh, design. He wrote some bios at Tooth and Nail for. That's Tooth and Nail yeah, and yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's got to be some some something, of that. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right, dry bones. Um, it's fun. Do you think you'll ever? You don't have to play live. That's the thing. Is like yeah. you can make a project and never really expect to play live. But it's always just almost more triumphant when you do, right? Yeah, I I think it would be great if we could play live and did someday. But um, what would the setup be like? Would it be like we'd have to put a band together? Basically, you'd have to put yeah, because yeah, it's all yeah. sampled and yeah. Well, some of recorded. it is, but a lot of it you can play live. But and the samples and stuff are usually like a you know, an actual guitar riff or something. So, mm. um, in that aspect, uh, Joe would probably play that, and then we'd probably have somebody else like bass. I put some bass lines on on that recording too. Okay, like I played bass on some tracks, so we'd probably do. A bass player, probably a drummer. It, I mean, it would, it would probably look like a you know four or five piece band. I think. Wow. <laughs> so I mean, that's the thing is like, you almost need to start a new band with if you don't have a band. You have to like, <laughs> yeah. You have the songs, Basically, sure. Yeah. You have the songs, but is the right way to do it to try to reenact the songs exactly or? Or to like take the songs and go, okay, well, this is how I'm gonna play because this makes sense now that I'm actually playing it live. That's what would happen with this band, most likely. Yeah. And I have a feeling that it would. It's a, it would be a really fun and interesting experiment. So I'm totally open to it if we can find time. And you know, uh, we live quite a bit bit apart. Uh, Ninety Pound Wuss is closer to me. Than yeah, and that's hard than enough, yet. right? It's hard yeah, enough. Yeah, that's hard enough. And you know, we uh, we are planning on doing some shows in next yeah. year so yeah yeah you need we need that that kitsap practice space totally if anybody knows yeah if there's anybody one of us anybody out there that's in the in the kitsap or around or kitsap adjacent area a few bands a few artists are looking for practice space so hit up jeff yeah um <laughs> and maybe maybe joe would come up to bremerton for that Maybe. Fun. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I mean, with life the way it is, it's 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 um it's a commitment to even be in a band. But I f I find that people that are even in bands that are just kind of hobby bands, so much fulfillment in that because it's not always about just playing live or playing. You know, it's about creating something. You know, it's about it's about making something from nothing. Yeah, totally. It's it's really there's something enjoyable about that. So yeah, I'm hoping that we will be doing uh, more of making um, something from nothing 
<laughs> future <laughs> with with actual <laughs> songs than just um recreating sort of what we did before <laughs> yeah that reminds me of this commercial that i'm constantly seeing it's like sky rizzy nothing is everything <laughs> and i'm just like that's so ridiculous nice. and yet i remember it uh it's for like some sort of thing you put on or you get a shot or something and it clears up your skin and yeah nice <laughs> i'm not trying to promote just go natural do your thing do your thing don't don't be don't be uh and see that's the thing it's like uh, not to get crazy but we are so over medicated in this country that uh it's just wild the first thing you think of is is when when somebody lost weight um there was a bunch of comments it was like a, a i don't know who it was i can't remember who it was it's not really important who it was it was a celebrity that lost some weight and a, bu but a bunch of people were like oh it's blah 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 what, whatever that new pill is that you can take okay there's a new pill that basically makes you skinny. It's like it cuts all your food cravings and wow. and the side effects are probably psychotic <laughs> in, in nature. <laughs> yeah. Like you're going to kill be. someone and yourself, but uh, you're going to be skinny and you're going to feel great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, people are, I mean, she, as, as you should be, you know, you wonder why people are so skeptical these days and... It's just because we've been lied to so often, <laughs> so often, so much, and it's comical at this point. Yeah. Where am I going with? I mean, we we're just talking about drugs. The drug companies obviously lie to you because they want you to, you know, take your take your your medicine. Well, the fact that it's so black and white and polarized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, most of the truth is usually somewhere in some gray area between you know, at all. Yeah. So. I don't know. Um. And, and if I may add, the you've heard this a million times, but the winners write history. History is written by the winners. And that yes. is so true. And winners doesn't necessarily mean the winner of a war or something. It's like the winner, whoever whoever's getting the most press, whoever's getting you know the most money, obviously, like those people can afford to write the rules. They can afford to tell you how it is how it should be people yeah. do, and people are just like as long as i got netflix i'm good <laughs> yeah. but it's also hard to not yeah. we, we need people like 90 pound wuss to tell us that <laughs> you know it's not over we have there's hope yeah totally there's <laughs> there's a reason to get up in the morning and and that's the thing is like I don't find my hope or my reason in a lot of outside things, you know? Like the government isn't in charge of my happiness, the the news isn't in charge of my happiness or sadness. It shouldn't be. Now and again it is. I mean, you can't yeah. help but be affected by you know, world situations, but um but for the most part I try to kind of take it into my like just personal world and go okay, is everybody good in my world? And is everybody healthy? Is everybody going about their day? And and starting from there is a much more sane place to start from than, all right, let's solve the world's problems. Let's do, you know, like, I'm not saying we shouldn't solve the world's problems, but we just forget our own problems. Like I, I, just, I can think of a lot of things that I could be working on better in my life that I don't even want to talk about because it's too personal. But it's like, okay, I, I should probably help that person. You know, if I, if I, if I really wanted to do something right, you know, and that person's in my life. It's in my capacity. Weird, right? I think that you can make a personal impact on the people that are closest to you and that connection um is important enough to foster in my opinion over things that are more abstract yeah so uh, there's points definitely where i think it's good to just you know breathe and and be just be yeah yeah and just exist be. You're, you you're like okay just to exist you can breathe in you're a human being so the the main sphere of influence and air, where you get your enjoyment is where you are 
and and what's around you yeah so it seems like being more connected i guess um yeah with people that are, you actually have some intimacy with is is uh probably really important i know i could definitely be better at that well disconnected my sort of from all of that media stuff especially if that's one of the things that you do regularly right um yeah i definitely th hear you on that that uh practicing sort of that you know people next to you loving them mm -hmm. I think that's great yeah 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 uh my team you know people get into the teams you know whether it's democrat republican and liberal conservative I feel like just being being there for for your team, you know, your immediate team can be people you work with, people you live with, people you spend time with. Yeah, totally. I mean, that that's my team, and it doesn't mean like f everyone else. It's just it there's all types of like I have so many friends for th throughout the years that definitely believe different things than me. I I I would imagine and none of none of me thinks to myself i can't get along with them because we don't see eye to eye on this thing i mean like i drink and there's so many of my friends are sober and, and are in a n a a a and a a and a <laughs> some of them in na as well yes but uh but th th it's never a thing so it's like it, and it never has been a thing i don't think uh but it feels like the climate today wants division. It wants you to sort of like cross, like set a line in the sand and be like, I'm not going to cross that line. I'm not going to cross that aisle or whatever it is. Um, but then you, you really think about it and you're like, I bet, I bet these politicians are actually like not that mad at each other because they're all like making good money. Uh, what I mean is like the left to right politician, you know, like back and forth on, on, on the news or on paper, they're like fighting each other. But a lot of that just seems like pop culture media stuff, just like maybe even feuds between like rappers, you know, it's like a way that you see like a Kanye or somebody like that has some salacious thing that happens, but it just makes people buy more of those records. That sounds so bleak, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not saying everything's fake, but everything in a certain realm is, I, I is pretty you. fake. And that's why I stick to, like, you know, real relationships, real people. Like, uh, like not categor categorizing myself so strictly. Um, yeah. I'm not saying it's the right way. I'm just saying, you know, it's like... I'm kind of one of those reasonable people, reasonable people that that really am willing to be open. Um, I definitely have my my own opinions and ideas and the way I feel about life. Um, and 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 it's funny because I'm way more chill than probably people think I am. Um, just because I, I you know my first reactions to things are often not very chill. But then I'm like, you know, when I have time to really think about things, I'm like, no, that's, yeah, that's cool. I'm chill with that. So, I, I don't know. I mean, all you can do is is do you. I mean, I don't know how many times you've been embarrassed in your life. Can you think of? Oh yeah. You think of? Is there is there a main? A main thing? embarrassment. A main like, oh, this is the most embarrassing moment of my life. Oh man, that's a terrible question. Um. <laughs> go there that's the thing it's like to we need to live in the in the pain sometimes i'm not saying you do yeah and yeah. i do i mean i need to force myself sometimes to just confront some of the some of the things that i almost like i feel like i almost get to in songs maybe not quite um uh, but but an embarrassing sure situation is uh <laughs> I mean, think about it. You're writing music from your heart about things that you care about. So yeah, your your emotions are there, and and how you're versing it. I mean, I, yeah, for sure, you've written songs that are that are deeply you. 
Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And even if it's like, the thing is, is like I could be, I can write a lyric and it be completely me, and I still don't necessarily think earnestly what I'm saying, you know. And so, like, some people might take it a little too much. It's like, you know, when, like, you know, when, like, you tell your mom you like um, Trapper Keepers one day, and then, like, for every day for 10 years, she gets you a new Trapper Keeper for Christmas or something like that. It could be whatever. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a Trapper Keeper. I just thought of that. I don't know. Um, I wanted a Trapper Keeper, and it, it took way too long for me to finally get one. But um, I always had the Manila folders. They were cheaper. Okay. Less expensive. So anyway, what my point is, is you've to if you've ever told someone something you liked, but then it wasn't like you loved it, like you wanted a million of them, but then that was the thing that stuck in their mind. And every time there was a gift, that's what they're getting. They're getting you um, maybe, maybe monkeys. Like I love monkeys and people get, actually, if people give me monkeys, I would always want them because I collect them. Um, and then Seahawks lighters, weird. In anything Seahawks because I collect Seahawks stuff. But besides that, it's all musical. Um, but there's like other things that I've said out loud and people like will always get me that. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay, thank you. Wow. It's just becoming, it becomes comical, you know? Um, well, I'm definitely embarrassed by uh, a lot of things. <laughs> it's not just like you know it was it's kind of embarrassing that i was such a part of like mars hill church that's kind of embarrassing now looking in retrospect same with uh because why because you should have known yeah i i think that i'm yes i got duped okay by you a feel narcissistic you, leader okay and um my version sort of of my beliefs in christianity at the time i think uh i was duped even by that um so it it's uh that's a little embarrassing and then you know I think the first 90 pound wuss record on Tooth and Nail some of those songs unfortunately for me are a little embarrassing um, Some of the lyrics It's mostly the lyrics musically I think it was it would be really fun to play but I think it was cuz I was young and didn't really think think about what i was saying as much and you know i mean we started that band because we all went to sort of like this bible study at a church or something and so we're writing songs after, yeah after that we're having band practice so there's those elements there's also my my whole sort of faith beliefs around around that stuff at that time i, I think it was a little immature and uh well, of course, you were a kid, now. man. You were a kid. Yeah, yeah I, you give I yourself a, a pass on that. But I, that's those so are that's those it. are great answers and yeah. valid too. Valid. <laughs> I, I mean, I would say the same thing about a lot of my lyrics as a kid. I mean, not, I, I never want to like point out any actual songs, and it's not like, I mean, yeah, of course, there's there's songs that I don't necessarily like. My beliefs don't line up the same way as they did then but a lot of it i feel like was when i look back on lyrics old lyrics i feel like they're they're just a kid being having a reaction like you know like i was saying earlier like i have sometimes a, a, a kind of a brash reaction to things and then i chill out about it and i feel like a lot of those songs are the first reaction it's me reacting it's me reacting to you know, being treated badly by some youth leader, you know, and so like, oh, F this, F the church, da, da, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. And, and then I chill out about it. I'm like, all right, I'm, it's fine. I'm, I'm good now. And, and it's like, I can see that in myself, how I seep into like, all right, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it anymore. But I've already written that song. All right, well, we got this song. Let's play it. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah. Well, for the the most part, I, I uh, if we decided as a band that we're you know we we are going to continue uh, at some capacity, um, and we'll probably play a few Northwest shows at towards the tail end of next year. So maybe the end of 
third quarter or sometime in the fourth quarter. I think we'll probably play, hopefully, Portland, Seattle, or very Seattle adjacent. Um, and, you know, I made some demos for the first time, so we'll see if we can actually write some songs together and what that, that could look like. Um, I don't know how far any of this will go, right? You only yeah. have tomorrow, so yeah uh, i'm here to right now so that's what that's the, the the loose plan i think i think that loose plan sounds great i mean just demos perked my ears up um i mean i would just say like go with momentum you know when you have the ideas work on it just don't wait and when you don't have the ideas obviously don't worry about it but but um try to get those guys on board like to to whip out the ideas back and forth get it done yeah and then we'll obviously have to practice for the shows and then once those ideas start to formulate i think and we all kind of learn a little bit we can get together and have multiple things to flush out because that's the hardest part is being you know if everybody lived in the same town i bet you'd be pro probably yeah find like two nights a week maybe at least three hers if not three right and then but right now it's like you know once a month or less Right, it's really hard to get yeah. together regularly for those things. So, so you're going to be sending tapes back and forth, yeah. probably, and, and we're still flushing out what our way of doing it looks like. But yeah. it's going to be something like that. Yeah, for sure. yeah, cool. Yeah, that's. I mean, the possibilities are endless, but it's like finding something that works for everybody because every you know somebody might like some app or some program or whatever, but it's like nobody else gets it. So you just find something right, you know, that works, but. Yeah. I, on my own, I just use voice memos and I kind of like do my ideas and then I'll send, like if I have a, a demo of a song like on guitar and vocal, once it's kind of, okay, I'm we're ready to put band on this, sometimes I'll just send that to the band just straight up and then they can listen to it. Or, you know, a lot of times I'll get to practice and Tom's like, nope, didn't listen to it. <laughs> so like, All right, thanks. Appreciate that. But no, he, we're always, you know, get to it. But, uh, that's kind of how we do it is like we kind of like uh, but but i think you're gonna have a more collaborative thing probably because yes you know, john's gonna be you know adding guitar parts and you know i don't know what you guys are gonna do but mm -hmm. it is this this band is definitely gonna be more collaborative in some ways just by nature of doing it that way mm -hmm. um yeah, but I don't. I don't know. We'll see how, how it satisfies my new uh, um, musical bug in me. Yeah, how do you decide what to write for Ninety Pound Wuss? Like lyrically, obviously, you just write about what you want to write about, I guess. But but how's it going to sound? Is it going to sound like you know a combination of everything? Like, is it so you know a new era? Maybe those those questions aren't answered. It's too early, but. What's the thought? Are there any thoughts in that realm? Yeah, I think um, my, the easiest thing for me probably to satisfy that bug would just be to have uh, some a band of people that lived close by each other. <laughs> yeah. So my, maybe some friends in Seattle. That, that would be the something I'd be interested in doing and exploring. And we, we've talked about a few different things with a few different people, but this 90 pound wuss thing came up and that sort of actually forced me to do something. And so it wasn't just a theoretical idea for way too long. Yeah. Um, it, it made me realize that I really need to be making music in my life. And I actually really like right now, um, the current state of things with hardcore and punk with a lot of new bands how, how those genres are like so cross-pollinated right now and the, it's more diverse than it's ever been and um it was like rediscovering it um the last few years i guess more and more uh it's not like i ever stopped listening to stuff but i wasn't discovering as much new music as i am now and going to as much concerts i, I go to right. so many concerts i hadn't done that for a long time and so having this opportunity to do 90 pound wuss again, which surprised me that we even did it and that it turned out. Thank you, Furnace Fest. Um, but we, uh, um, 
It opens up doors. It opens up possibilities, yeah, yeah, yeah. dimensions. Totally. Well, it, I would always think about if I was going to do music again, and it was going to be me, Jeff, suffering or whatever, and not just me playing in somebody else's band or whatever. Um, I it would uh, not be ninety pound wuss, and obviously not rafted in monkeys. So it was only suffering in the hideous thieves, which was my band. Like all those records, except for the last one, I wrote the majority of all the music on there. I, I'd usually write it on acoustic guitar or whatever, and then when we'd mm. start band format, I'd actually write the electric guitar parts for one of the guys um, or sort of show them my acoustic ones and fiddle around a little bit. Um, and, and you know, so I'd bring th these things, but I was working with people who were g such great musicians that they started writing their parts to those basic song structures mm -hmm. that I'd put, and then hence it becomes, you know, a band. Yeah. Um, and then later, the last record was way more collaborative for Suffering in the Hideous Thieves. It was, it's called Ashamed, and it was more of the guys in the band at the time. We were like a, a band that was these people, whereas before it was like me with whoever was playing with me. Right. Yeah. I mean, do that with 90 Pound Woods, just like write a bunch of songs, like the way you would write songs, um, more 90 Pound Woods vibe, I guess. But, and then, and then maybe those guys push a bunch of their song ideas and you've just got a pile of ideas on the side and then you can also do Jeff Suffering and the Hideous Thieves I think that's awesome Yeah. and then you'll do your tour with Rafted Dead Monkeys <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's a weird one I don't know if it's actually going to happen we were talking about it earlier and I don't really care how public it, it is because we, we don't know if it's even going to happen yeah probably not going to happen but if it does awesome <laughs> but yeah I have some friends in a band who, who are fairly popular, and I went and I sang with them. It was a re reunion of 20-year anniversary of their first record. What? And okay. So I sang on that record, or screamed on it, and did some of those uh, Jeff Suffering low vocal har harmonies that yeah. maybe work, maybe don't. We'll, we'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they work. They um, work, damn it. Somewhere. Anyway, um... Whatever. They so, yeah. So, show, and uh, Rafted Dead Monkey's last album, Thorough Lev, happens to be one of their, the, the drummer and the lead guitar player, singer. Um, it happens to be the, one of their favorite bands of all time and favorite records of all time, that last record. And so they were talking to me saying, yeah, I was just listening to it the other day. And, and uh, the, the, the main guy said he could totally do John Spaulding's parts, not a problem. He's like, and I know he could because he's kind of a virtuoso guitar player, mm -hmm. and so, um, <laughs> and so that, and the drummer was like, "Oh, I love that!" I lo like, they were just, and so the the idea was maybe we play some shows with them, and they're doing double duty. Yeah, if it happens, it happens. I don't know. Yeah, um, that's why I'm no names will be divulged. Of course, of course, but you it would involve me and Doug for sure. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's basically roadside monument, ninety pound wuss. That's what it, Raft of Dead Monkeys basically was. Yeah. So that's weird. So all these ba the bands that I don't think like the it only ever made sense was well whenever I'm ready to do suffering in the hideous thieves again I'll do it, but I've never been ready so it hasn't happened and then I get sort of the phone calls about ninety pound wuss mm -hmm. and that changes my whole perspective on everything, uh, which like I said I've been rediscovering in the last number of years like more modern like newer hardcore and punk bands like scowl and gel and yeah i mean zulu freaking there's so many there's, there's just it goes on and on mm -hmm. and and even adjacent stuff you know math rock whatever like all this stuff and uh so it just keeps going you yeah. you stop listening the bands don't stop making yeah, records exactly. touring yeah everybody just keeps going it's crazy yeah so it's been it's been really fun to rediscover and then rediscover that side of me that wants to be making that music again mm -hmm. um so i think i'm at a point where 90 pound wuss is going to write songs that sound like 90 pound wuss but different somehow yeah probably dude i'm excited yeah i'm excited for it and i and i think you got the right idea like 90 pound wuss is worth continuing in some capacity whatever it kind of ends up being and, and doing it's going to be worth it and then, of course, whatever you do on the side of that with, with you know, Raft of Dead Monkeys or Hideous Thieves, that's, that's all gravy. Yeah. It's gravy. But, yeah. you know, you built a huge foundation with 90 Pound Wuss, and I'm just glad that it's not dead. 
Yeah, thanks, man. It's it's been really exciting, and that that dry bone stuff. We have that LP, and we're gonna keep doing. Um, we're gonna try to keep doing stuff since it's it's that way of we're sending music back and forth. Um, I yeah. think that it'll be worthwhile to maybe try to pursue that, but also I think Joe could totally help with ninety pound wuss too. Um, so we've talked about that. And wow, boom. So I don't know what that looks like yeah. musically, at least I don't know, but um, it definitely could look like a lot of weird, great sounding, cool interludes or something on live. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially if I keep using Ableton. That's what I was using <laughs> to actually yeah. run that MIDI controller. Okay. So instead of having an old analog keyboard, when I used my keyboards, it was literally Ableton Live. Oh, but not, <laughs> you weren't playing it live. You weren't playing like playback, but you were just oh, using the plugins on yeah, Ableton Yeah, just for live. the MIDI controller. Yeah. But there was a drum machine. So at the beginning of the nostalgia, we actually, for the first time, ever used a drum machine. And it was that. Okay. So it was the it Ableton there. Live. I played it through there. Yeah, That's I played cool. it as a, as a one long clip, I think, or something. Um but yeah, it was the full full uh, the full length of the beginning, the intro of the song when when we played uh, at the live show that you guys came to, mm -hmm. um, that you were at in Bremerton, and we added uh, so Colin did it and he added uh, like the eight oh eight big bass boom right right at the beginning when the guitars come in. It was yeah, kind of funny. That's great. And it's the last beat of the drum machine. So nice. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. So what? Okay, so nothing's booked live. For ninety pound was coming up, you're just working on new stuff kind of right now, and yeah, and figuring out. Um, like I said, somebody between Port Angeles and Seattle, Kitsap area, if there's rehearsal spaces up here for bands that would gladly consider it, I'd rather have an hourly rate than a monthly. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think I think given enough prodding and poking, can find a spot. Yeah, I would think yeah. so, too. Right on. All right. Let's wrap it up. What do you think? Yeah. Let's wrap good. it up. It was good. It's good. It good hanging. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> I feel like you're warm. You just look so warm over there. Oh, I feel warm and comfy. <laughs> just beard. Yeah, it's like nothing's beard. getting through to you. The wind could come, and you don't care. I'm just right here. <laughs> this is where I exist. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Jeff Suffering, everyone. Thank you.